May you please marry the mini to teach yourself? Good afternoon, team. My name is Margaret Jamini. I am so grateful to join the team. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Margaret Jamini. Um, I think the the the, the Manzini team, Manzini Hospital team, can hear me. If you can hear me, may you please just introduce yourself. Good afternoon, team. Uh, Sanders Les Melani here from Mazinik Government Hospital Palliative Care Department. Um, I'm joining with Portia Zamini uh, from the Insiders Department. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Manzini team, Manzini uh, Government Hospital team. Uh, may I kindly uh, move to Malaika from the India team, if you can hear me. May you please introduce yourself. Everyone, I am Malaika, I am from Echo India, and I am the relationship manager for the Swatini. And um, thank you for having me here, and thank you for conducting these sessions. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Malaika. Uh, I think we'll move on to our today's business. Uh, oh, we have Mosin Zabele, uh, who has just joined us. If you can hear me, Zabele, Hatsebe, sorry about that. Hatsebe, uh, may you please introduce yourself, sir? Okay, let's move on, I think. As time goes by. Uh, uh, join us. Okay, maybe because of, just because of uh, technical issues. We'll move on, on to our today's business, which is uh, complementary and alternative therapies for pain management and palliative care. We also have our, our our case study uh, mm -hmm. from our EHA team, uh, which will be presented by, by Mr. Kumayo uh, later on. But, but uh, before that, we'll move on, on our today's cybernetics or our today's presentation uh, from, from Sister Felicity Kele. Uh, Babane Government Hospital. I think she is ready. Uh, okay, uh, while we are still waiting for Sister Felicity, uh, we'll move on to our 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 case presentation uh, from the hub team. Uh, I just mentioned that uh, Mr. Kumayo yeah, will, will lead us on. on our uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. As I was introduced before, I'm Pius Kumoy, and I'll be presenting today's case. <laughs> So today's case is uh, about a client who, who, who is 16 years of age and main and was diagnosed of eye cancer stage 4 in 2016. Uh, the main problem or concern about this patient is the patient has mild joint pain and patient. However, it began to be quick, amazing, and strong. I'm um, suspecting the patient might be under the protein decay. So, uh, 
I need your take as to how best can I go about taking a comprehensive payment for such a opportunity. Holistic assessment. <coughs> Holistic assessment, uh, the chief problem. The patient uh, complains of chronic mind, somatic, and neuropathic pain on the left eye socket where the eye was surgically removed. The pain was described pain aggravated by movement. Patient reports of the pain has interfered with his ability to do activities of the living like movement, garden, etc. The patient has impaired vision due to the due to dressing which closes his eyes. Now has lost now has also loss of hearing and has lost all his results due to key. The patient uh, is also having a difficulty in eating. Significant or significant medical or surgical needs. The patient was diagnosed with eye cancer in 2016 and was done eye surgery in 2017 as a group He was initiated for chemo in 2020 and completed six the client also reported the history of GI ulcers. However, not treating the government regardless of being advised to do so, he continues to procure the government over the counter. Medication, or oh, there's no past relevant medication. Current medication, the patient is on myogenitan and TDSPO. Paracetamol 1 gram TDSPO, Diclofen at 50 milligram TDSPO, and also vitamin B12 OPPO. Social history and pertinent family history. The patient is uh, the retired. Uh, he used to be an ex, or oh, he is an ex mine. Education level is high school. And he is of low social economic status. He is married and uh, not outside of this. Uh, when it comes to advanced directive, uh, do not resuscitate and do not intubate orders have not yet been discussed. And there is also no way that has been discussed. Uh, healthcare problems. His wife, mental capacity was assessed and it was found to be, she was found to be stable and well oriented to time, place, and event. The review of system, uh, when it comes to vital signs, they are they are found to be normal. Pain score rating, patient reported two over ten. Which is my pain. Lick of functionality score is two. Symptoms that were assessed, patient only the balai that we replace with the my pain. And there is also poor mobility. On further plan, typically. So we plan to continue with. Own assessment and management at home. We wish to help the patient to express to express himself in describing his pain, to diagnose and manage his pain effectively and efficiently. We also hope to supply the patient with case and supplies to promote the patient's control and promote well being and comfort. Psychological, we are hoping to continue 
We are hoping to we are hoping to be continuous assessment and supportive care to you which is include and take with your counseling. So shall we hope to continue to support the family and the patient with materials that food and research. But possibly working close with local community stakeholders to support the care. Spiritually we we encourage the family to continue to go to church. Thank you very much. This must be the end of today's case. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kumayo, for for an informative presentation on our today's case study. Uh, yet is the case for this for the 63 year old with eye cancer. Uh, how best can we can we can we help this client uh for the form? Us to do more because our our end goal as health workers is to, is to make sure that the quality of care is consistent. So how best can we help him uh, for 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 what uh, for what has been discussed? As I mentioned before, that uh, I can see by your resume and or or just uh, document or just show on on, on the chat box. So, how best can we can we help the client? If you have questions, if you have comments, you can do questions. I I I I I I get the uh, again from from Mr. Joseph. Thank you, Mr. Kenneth. My question or questions I'm not sure if there are questions or concerns, or maybe I didn't hear a word. But I'd like to know or you talk on the follow up care about wound assessment and management. So um. Like to know where is the patient, maybe what state is it in, where any current interventions, and also with the chief complaint, there's a complaint about pain and also the patient sources like offices. Uh, is there any further plan for the pain management? And also, as a suggestion, since the client is Apparently, the nurse noted that the client is having pain through facial expressions, which the client is not verbalizing. Maybe uh, I would say maybe the nurse can consider explaining to the client the, the importance of accurately reporting the pain and also finding out the reasons for the client to be reluctant to report the pain since we know that the pain is not touching. Most men, they feel that if they are expressing that they are having pains, that they are weak or something. Maybe if that can be corrected and explained to the patient that it's not wrong, so express that you are feeling pain so that our intervention is going to be applied. So thank you, that's all. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Comment. Uh, uh, I'm still waiting for 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 the comments, colleagues. If there are any, uh, I'm still waiting for the questions. If there are any, I'm a cabo. I say I heard from you. Yes. Uh, uh, um. Thank you so much, uh, facilitator, for. And thank you so much, Mr. P, for the case. Actually, these are common situations that we, we find and we usually see when we are assessing our patients. And these are normally uh, the situation that may lead to mismanagement of pain, whereby a patient will verbalize something 
and then act on differently. What I see that the patient is reporting a pain score that is mild, um, burning sensation, which might be somatic neuropathy, looking at its location when it's a post-op hospital. So it is a possibility nerve issues are, are, are there. And then he's reporting a mild pain together with grimacing. So then the question it, uh, is, uh, how do I know what the patient is saying? I think the question that we need to, then to ask ourselves every time this might happen is to ask ourselves, what could be the possible uh, uh, reasons for this difference in expression? Verbally, you're saying it's mild, but uh, facially, I'm seeing the difference. I don't know if the team can share what could be possible contribution of factors, uh, things that can cause this difference in expression. What could lead to this patient to, to say something and act on something? I think maybe we can share our experiences from what we have seen in our facet. What could lead to a patient to say, my pain is mild and it's, it's code two, but then when you look at his face, he's grimacing. Maybe then from there, uh, we can share on the, how best we can manage such situations. Maybe we can share uh, what normally is the possible reason for such in different patients. Maybe we can share, I don't know, if colleagues can share that too. Or oh, our you team, you can also share. Let's share, let's be open up and share. What could normally make patients? They tell you something, but they are behaving differently. It's similar when they are saying I have severe pain, but non-verbal communication is not saying. What could be the reason for, for that difference? Maybe we can share, especially those who are from the clinical <laughs> team. Okay, before I, 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 I can point out, there is a comment from Tantanzile. Uh, we have seen uh, clients who uh, underwrite pain to avoid being given morphine, mm -hmm. which causes them severe constipation. Yeah, this is true. Uh, I saw a hand from, from, from before that. I saw a hand from Sister Felicity, if I'm not mistaken. Sister Felicity, is there something you'd like to share? I don't know. Sister Felicity, can you hear me? I saw a hand. Uh, uh, is there anything you'd like to share? Yes, afternoon, team. Sorry for the late connection. Uh, some, it also depends that does the patient understand your way, the tool or the way of ass assessing the, the pain score? Sometimes they might be afraid to show that they don't understand. Then they just give you the number. Okay. And, but some, they understand, but because they don't want to be given that strong thing, then they know they give you a certain number, which will be, uh, make sure that they're giving morphine. But some, they want the morphine, they just give you the high number. So sometimes it just play around that. And then it also depends on the health worker. If is able to use the assess tool or questions, because sometimes it, the health worker might not be competent enough to explain and use the questions to assess the pain. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sister. Uh... It's a pity that the, 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 the patients, all patients have got rights, and the, the patient is always right. You have to give what, what the patient wants. 
I saw a head from 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 the air team from Thank you, Mr. Kelly. It will be just to re-echo again when uh she was the first concern, and it might be true to our culture, the way it is that most men they fear expressing that they are in pain. And also, okay, depending on when and how the client is seen, then the skin assist us with the talk. It might be that the client doesn't want to localize maybe in front of the wife or the children that they are actually in pain. Here is it, they are away from us. Thank you so much for this. Uh, we, we are taking note of all the comments that you have been you have portrayed today, and I think we can use it to help our clients uh, fight this battle. Uh, I think we will continue uh, with our uh, comments, Mr. Matam. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Chandas uh, Lefelicity, uh, and everybody who contributed. Uh, another issue is that uh, sometimes uh, the issues of culture will do. But what I guess I can say is that uh, sometimes uh, it may it's, it's not safe to live within uh, assumptions. So. The patient will present with uh, grimace, but he's saying something. The way, best communication tool to use in this area of assessment is to is to ask the patient on what you see, so that the patient can can verify what you are seeing. For example, oh, I see that your pain too. Or oh, is mild, but I see you grimacing. Can you tell me why are you grimacing? So that's when you will discover that maybe it's the issue of description. The patient thinks too is severe or what? Uh, maybe the patient is a masculinity issue, is scared of saying what he feels, or else sometimes it's a uh, issues of spirituality. You know, in the country sometimes we, we shun the devil. You know. So they don't want to express pain because maybe that won't be the same as relenting to the suffering. So this one is a man. So there's a lot that we need to do, but to come out of the, the, the assumption, it's best to ask the patient on what you see. Uh, that one will help us to, 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 help to be able to diagnose exactly what's the pain. And then if then all the other issues of the patient understanding uh, the health professional uh, skill, uh, the cultural issues are eliminated. You will find that then now we can tell exactly uh, what the, the why the discrepancy. Yeah, that's what I can add for 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 this patient. Okay, thank you, Mr. Matkamo. Um, uh, I cannot see comments. That means we, we, we shall continue with our session and we we'll move on to our today's presentation. We are supposed to start with it, but uh, due to unforeseen uh, circumstances, we uh, couldn't. That's why we started with our case. So I think Felicity, Sister Felicity, is ready uh, for our today's presentation. Uh, I will kind of give this opportunity to you since that. Sister Felicity, uh, the presentation. Yes, afternoon, team. 
Yes, afternoon <laughs> team. My name is Felicity Lukele. Hey, my connection is so poor, but I'll try to be fast. My, I'm working at Mbabane Government Hospital in the Palliative Care Unit. This is a continuation of the non-pharmacological non uh, treatments which can be used for pain management in palliative care. So today I'll be looking at the body-based therapies as we've been doing all the mind-body therapies prior, previously. Body-based therapies are typically non-verbal and require minimal conversation, focus on energy and emotion in the body. The body work therapy becomes more effective when practiced frequently and it helps to relieve pain. It improves the mood, improves blood pressure, weight control, the bone density, endurance, strength, sleep. Actually, I even, can even touch more on this. Example of this body-based therapy is Flexology, energy healing, magnetism. We look at the massage. Are you there with me? We are with you, sister. Sometimes you go down and you, you cannot hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's my. Uh, that's why I've been trying to relocate. Uh, the massage. The slide for massage. Examples, should I, okay. Examples of the body-based therapy is the massage, copper band, acupuncture, energy therapy, chiropractic therapy, reflexology, NH. Okay, thank you. I'm going to the massage um, therapy, massage, is when the, the soft tissues of the body are kneaded, wrapped, taped, and stroked with a gentle touch over the, the steep area or can do it on the general body. That's reducing the strain and restoring fluid movement to alleviate the pain. I'm sure everyone has uh, received massage somewhere, somehow. Okay, and then the chiropractic <laughs> therapy is the manipulation of the bone, of the spine joints and the and skeletal system, which is the, it's just concentrated on the area of the spine column. Reflexology, it's a type of massage in which the pressure is applied to the specific joints on the feet or hands, which are believed to match up with certain parts of the body. Okay, uh, whereby they just stroke in the air, it could be on the feet, on the sole of the feet. You see, when you do it in a baby, it even smiles sometimes. So there are areas there which are connected to the smiling. Then the energy healing. This one is done by placing a hand lightly on or above the person with a goal of guiding energy to help a person's own healing. Some pastors, they do that, the lightly putting of a hand above, but some they are, they're doing it they're a bit deeper. The copper band. We have a, a, um, a name for this, the copper band, 
is the lijiva. I hope many of us have seen some people wearing it, but that does not mean that there are, 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 are palliative patients. Copper bands is the tiny, the tiny amount of copper wraps off the bracelet into the skin, which absorbs into the body. Copper does some things in our body. Um, it is believed that it rejoins the cartridge lost due to arthritis, which causes ailments and relieves pain. But some other people with other conditions wear, can wear this. And the benefits of wearing this copper band is it boosts the healthy immune system. It does the healing spirit, the spiritual healing and energy. It ensures positive energy. It also promotes wild creation and also boosts your self-esteem. So people wear the copper band for different reasons, but for us here in palliative, it also helps. So don't look at, oh, this one has got a pain issue, but maybe it's doing it for the wealth creation or self-esteem. Then there is this magnet and oxygen therapy. Okay, the oxygen, I hope we all know, I mean the magnet, I hope we all know magnet. When you put money, it just attracts. Same thing here. The magnet is placed on the skin and the capillary well was relax, allowing the increased blood flow, oxygenation, and removal of accumulated pain producing prostaglandins. This action relieves muscle spasms frequently and pain. And also they say it also reduces inflammation. There is this uh, static or permanent magnets. They are in caves in a wrap with a wrist belt and place where the pain is felt. They also come in different strengths. There's a weak, I'm sure for when the pain, it goes, it has to match with the level of your pain. There's a weak one, then there's a moderate one and a strong one. Then there is this hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This intervention is when they breathing oxygen in a prescribed chamber or tube that allows the lungs to gather up three times more oxygen than we would be by breathing oxygen at a normal air pressure. Okay, in our situation, we know that oxygen is given when someone cannot breathe anymore. But in these other places, they just use this oxygen to treat the pain. Not that the person is not able to, to breathe, but it's one of the therapy to reduce the pain. The effect is that it reduces, it reduces the pain, tenderness, uh, it reduces inflammation, it fights infection and creates new blood vessels. Uh, acupuncture. The practice of penetrating the skin with thin metal and specific movement of the practitioner. Oh, okay, sorry. The practice of penetrating the patient's skin, okay, with thin metal, following a specific movement of the practitioner's hand or with electric stimulation. As you see the picture, they, it's like, it looks like nickels, I must say. This relieves pain by the release of endorphins, the body's natural pain killing chemicals and affects the part of the brain that governs the serotonin brain chemical involved in the mood. The good, the acupuncture is good for treating side effect of chemotherapy, nausea and vomiting, astroarthritis and neck pain. Although it is not ideal for patient with psychosis and look at the picture, you know, someone with a mental illness can behave the other ways. 
when you when seeing those nickels or when those, seeing those metal penetrating the skin. And I don't think it's also good for one with the blood bleeding disorder. Also, this is also known as the traditional Chinese medicine technique, where they use for balancing the flow of energy or life force, and they call it Qing or Chuang. It is believed to allow, it is believed to follow pathways in the body. Certain points of the body are stimulated to promote health and lessen disease symptoms and also then treat the side effects. Side effects of the treatment could be chemo uh, or radiation. Then we have these palliative therapies. Um, palliative care surgery, an operation is performed to remove the tumor as much as possible to relieve pain by decreasing the pressure and prevent complication. This is also called debulging. Chemotherapy, targeted cancer drugs targets the, are administered to, and they target the cells that help cancer to survive and grow. These cancer cells then shrink and this is known as, as dinosoma. Radiotherapy destroys the cancer in the treated area by damage, damaging the DNA of the cell. And this is also good for pain, for bone pain. So this is what our palliative treatment undergo of which chemotherapy is received locally or in South Africa. Then radiotherapy is also of, uh, received in South Africa only because it's one of the very expensive uh, therapy. Then palliative surgery is only done when the tumor cancer cells are still localized. Once they start spreading, the, the, the doctor might say, no, we cannot now do that. So that is one of the therapies in palliative that can be used for pain treatment, although they have some side effects, especially the chemotherapy and um, the therapy. But the purpose is to control the disease so that the patient would be relieved from the pain. Thank you. For listening and participating. Thank you so much, uh, uh, sister, for, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, we are learning a lot. It was well informed and, and it was uh, well stated. Uh, thank you so much. There is a lot that we learn. Uh, I'm more interested in, in the part on, 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 on the Richie part of a band. Uh, as soon as I get uh, out, I will get one from myself. So thank you so much, sister. Uh, I, will, I will open this platform to, to anyone who has a comment, uh, anyone who has a question uh, right now. Uh, in response of our today's presentation from the Mabale government hospital. Any 
Yes. Uh, are you yawning or stretching or you want to comment on something? It was accidentally touched. I was just mm, digesting, digesting the information. Actually, I'm also mm, being a... <laughs> I am interested in the copper brand myself. <laughs> no, Sister Felicity, thank you very much. We have learned some things are going to be helpful to even ourselves, not necessarily to the patients, because we also are people we sometimes sometimes have those uh, pains and ailments that need or that will require some non-pharmacological management thank you very much by the way today I, I don't have any comment it's just that i am listening and learning thank you thank you so much uh, 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 Marika, baby. Uh, I saw it from Mr. Mataru. Uh, I think there's something that I uh, wants to share. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, I want to say thank you so much, Sister Felicity, for, for this. Uh, you know, uh, I was looking at how far we have gone with this uh, non pharmacological therapies. And then I'm looking at these practices. Most of this. Uh, Therapies, they, they are a little bit of covering the cultural side and then covering the spiritual side of the patient, the social side, you know. Now I'm learning that everybody now is looking towards the the, the, the wrist bank, you know. <laughs> but there's other things that are there. Uh, I'm, I'm just thinking when you have a patient presenting to the facility wearing all these spanglies, you know. Sometimes we think, ah, oh, maybe it's a traditionalist or what. Yet they, are, they might be doing different things. Some are looking for power. Some are building their esteem. You know, in, in the TVs these days, many people are wearing these things. It's like you might think maybe uh, they are traditionalists or what, but I'm learning that one of the things they are doing there is for, is for discovering themselves, you know, spiritual gain other than maybe physical, but then also physically can be used for pain. Uh, we have our intern social worker here. Uh, she was telling me that she has an experience with Okupanja. Unfortunately, she never detailed much where exactly she gets it. Maybe for the benefit of the whole clinicians to know where can, they can refer patients who are interested in doing it. Because now we know it is good for management of pain as a, a complementary therapy. I don't know if she can say. She's just next to me here. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, about the acupuncture. It is done at Gables. Gables is doing. There's a Chinese massage parlor, they, they offer the acupuncture. I don't, I'm not sure about, but it's not expensive. It's affordable. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, it's, it's not for white people, guys. <laughs> Anyone can go to that. Anyone can do that. Uh, there are lots that we learn here for pain management. The, the, the pharmacological route. So, so we are we, uh, we are very lucky to have uh, uh, such presentations. I can see a hand from Sister Felicity. Uh, sister, Sister Felicity, I see a hand. I stay. Oh, hello. Yes, to emphasize that when you use these complementary therapies, you have to consult with your medical team. Okay. And usually they are they go together with a conventional uh, treatment. 
but there are some alternate therapies whereby they don't want to use the medicine, they opt for another. And some of these therapies are said to uh, have been evaluated to be safe, but some are not evaluated. So you need to get more information about that complementary you are opting to do. And the, you must know that when it's not the one thing off, then you expect the good results. It had said there, the more you use it, the better it has a, a good outcome. So we have to look at that. Otherwise, these Cooper Bells, I'm sure there are many reasons behind them, just that the one for the pain, it's there. So don't buy it before you don't, we are not sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, sister. Uh, I think that point is very, very important to consult. Don't just use anything you are not sure of. You need to consult uh, an expert so that uh, that one can help you and, and life will go on. Um, anyone with, 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 with a comment uh, before we wrap up? Yes, okay. I, I want just to say, colleagues, thank you so much. Uh, I don't know. I want just to say thank you so much for attending this series. Uh, actually, we are about to finish the principles of pain management. We started from defining what was pain or what is pain. We look at assessment and then uh, we looked at, uh, we look at, uh, we look at uh, prescribing an opioid. Then we went on to, to look on issues like um, uh, opioids itself. And then we, we dip down into what, how to prescribe an opioid and management of opioids, special populations. So we looked around on, I will say on uh, pharmacological management. Then now we have covered on non-pharmacological therapies or intervention that we can use, which may include uh, physical therapies that we covered, that including uh, heat and cold therapies. We then looked at uh, mind-directed or uh, targeting therapists. We looked at uh, including issues of prayer, meditation, and others. And then today we're looking at complementary body therapies that we have covered them today. So we are trying to say, uh, Professor Wakunda last time advised us that <coughs> these therapies, they are there to support even the, the, the pharmacological management. For especially with these people with serial illnesses, it is not possible sometimes to control the pain without the pharmacologicals, but then also effectiveness of the pharmacologicals is, is improved by combining pharmacology together with the non-pharmacology. I hope we have all learned a lot from this series. So I'm hoping when we next week we cover up the issues of adjuvants, uh, we will be able then to summarize all the principles looking around on general uh, pain management. Then we will move towards uh, the issue of dealing with specific types of pain that we face in our different facilities. Applying all the information we've been learning since October last year. So uh, that would be my input and thanking you so much uh, to attend and we are all different. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Matang. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, colleagues, uh, I think it will be towards the end of our today's session. Uh, before we can wrap up, uh, I'd like to, to remind you, colleagues, that uh, there is a feedback link that is on our chat box. So for, for, for our people, please click that link. And fill the feedback form here. You find the feedback form and, 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 and fill that form uh, so that we can know how helpful is uh, the surgeons 
each and every day. Well, thank you so much. Uh, our next session will be on the 5th of July, 2023, same time, uh, and we'll be talking about uh, the commonly used adjuvant analgesics in palliative care and their cases. So I think uh, we'll all be here and we'll invite more and more so that uh, our clients can, can 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 be fine and the quality of care can be improved up there. So thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. If you want to recap on our previous sessions, visit our YouTube channel. You will find all mm -hmm. sessions together that or we have, we have held in the past. And also in our eye, we we'll find some. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. See you on the 5th.